Hi everyone, Mac here. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit today about uh, the importance of communication and the importance of sound in esports. I think communication is actually one of as a as a coach. A lot of uh, a lot of the impact I have is is purely through communication and how I speak to people. Uh, I think actually it's something that we work on actively a lot. You know, making sure that. Um, People are really clear about what we expect of them, the standards that we set as a team, and that we have really clear, open lines of communication between players and staff so that um, everyone knows exactly what we're doing, everyone knows that we're on the same page, um, and that if anyone feels the need to you know, give feedback on something, if there are issues with something, if there's something they would like to change, something they think someone can do better, that that's also addressed and that's, you know, that we're able to speak about that openly and easily. Um, that's kind of a general one going into a match um, again a lot of it is about making sure we're on the same page so making sure that prior to the match we've discussed um, how we want to play against this opponent what do we want to achieve what style do we want to play um, who are we planning on kind of funneling resources into what the draft is going to look like all of those things um, so again making sure that everyone's on the same page with regards to all of that is super important so i think when it comes to learning how to be a good communicator there are two things First of all, there's um, being able to express what you need, you know, saying in this situation, it would be really great if you could do this for me. I could do with some extra help with this. I'd really appreciate it if this happened, stuff like that. Um, and that goes as well in game. Obviously, you cut out some of the, the fluffy, nice bits in game and say, I need this, be here, be on this way. Learning how to direct people, how to micromanage people by telling them what exactly it is that you need and being able to do that in game clearly and concisely. And then out of game, being able to do that respectfully. Um, that's really important. Then um, the second part is obviously being able to listen to other people and a big part of that is um, kind of being able to actively listen and being able to use empathy to understand where someone is coming from. Um, that's something that we work on very very actively with all of our players because we want to make sure that as I said earlier there are open lines of communication and that everyone understands where each other is coming from. Different people have different expectations of what it is to play in a team, what it is to play their role correctly, things like that. Um, and good communication allows us to understand each other properly so that if someone is struggling with someone, we can stop struggling with something, then we can figure out why. So um, coming into a match, the structure of the communication is very much that we go through things together, planning as a team, usually the coaching staff will have met up beforehand and said okay these are what we think our objectives are coming into this draft this is how we want to draft against this team these are the champions that we think are you know must bans and then we will bring that to the players and say okay this is like the rough plan um, and usually you know there are multiple ways of doing it as a as a you know coaching staff you can say this is the plan what do you guys think and then we can all change it together or um, or you can go to the players and say okay uh, Today you're probably going to be playing this, this or this and different styles work with, with different people. Some people want to know the full plan and want to go through every single step of it and know exactly what happens in every scenario. And for some people they don't want to, you know, have a super long meeting about it and worry about all of the details and they'd rather just know, okay, I'm going to play one of these three champions. And then within that, I'll try my best to give them the choice of that for, you know, what fits best within the, within the composition. So that's prior to the game. Um, I think during the draft, it's a lot about, um, understanding the structure of the draft which is my job so understanding the priorities that exist within that um, usually we have a really clear plan on what we're doing in the kind of first phase of the draft so you know we ban this champion and this champion and then if they ban x we ban y etc and guiding the players through that is very much my job so during the draft i'll be kind of almost narrating what's happening okay this means that such and such a champion is now more important okay if they do this then we're going to do this etc etc and that means that i don't know whatever champion you want Diego Lee Sin will become more important or these are the first picks that are available within the draft. Um, then once we actually start picking our own champions, usually, again, for the first three, there's a really clear structure. It's okay, they picked X and so therefore we pick Y and that's very solid and very set. And after that, things tend to get a bit more fluid. Um, and after that, you know, you might have an option to pick, um, you know, two of three roles uh, on blue side on your two, three pick and say, okay, we can pick AD plus jungle, or we can pick AD plus mid, I think this, and then we'll see what the players say and see what they're feeling. Usually in draft, I give a lot of um, emphasis to making sure that the players feel comfortable. And if a player uh, says, I'm really feeling this, pick me this, then we usually go with it. 
Um, outside of that, I will try to give players options. You know, I'll say, okay, I think this is the best option here, but I also think this and this are good. Which do you prefer? And then we tend to let the player choose. So the later down we go in the draft, the more players tend to have their own say. Um, but a player is always free to step up and say, no, I really think this, give me this. Um, and I will carry the game, or I think it's really good, whatever. And, and usually then we'll trust that player. So I have final say on, on a lot of things, but usually I'll give the final say to the player in a lot of situations. Okay, so um, I think there are a couple of reasons for which having good sound is pretty important. Obviously, League of Legends works a lot, especially within a team fight, on audio cues, and different players will use those differently, but most players play with the sound fairly high, and most players also don't play with like music or anything else like that on. Um, there are obviously some who do, but generally speaking, it's important to be able to hear the audio cues of, I don't know, Scion presses R somewhere across the map, and you hear him yell, uh, and then you know how to respond to that or um, certain things within a team fight when there's lots of stuff going on on the screen visually um, being able to hear the sound of i don't know shen taunt or something like that um, whatever it happens to be players will have all of their own understanding of the audio cues um, and that can give them exactly the you know understanding they need of what's going on in the team fight or the fact that this person has just used this ability and therefore i might have to use my flash or whatever it is um, Obviously, then there's also the fact that you have to hear your teammates over that, so good sound quality is really important. Um, and throughout a match, it's really easy for someone's headset to kind of move slightly or their microphone to move slightly when they drink from their cup of water or whatever it is, right? Um, so having good setup there is super important as well because things can get quite, quite hectic. Um, I think the other thing that's worth mentioning is that um, if you're playing in front of a big crowd, um, sometimes you know, there have been occasions in the past where People literally haven't been able to hear their teammates over the, the roar of the crowd. Um, and that's that's a pretty big factor when it comes to, to playing offline, the sound quality. So yeah.